hello students welcome to the tutorial lecture so in this lecture we will be solving some problems related to Carnot engine and coefficient of performance so let us take our first problem a boiler of steam engine produces steam at a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade the engine exhausts its waste into the atmosphere when the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade if its efficiency is 0 0.15 compare the efficiency with that of Carnot engine so what is given in our problem is we are told that as a steam engine which produces steam and we get some work out of it and the efficiency of that steam engine is given as given to be 0 0.15 so in other words the efficiency of the steam engine is 15 percent and what we are given is the temperature of a reservoirs if you remember the efficiency of a steam engine or any engine is nothing but 1 minus the q the heat rejected that is the heat given to the cold reservoir minus the heat taken from the hot reservoir and this efficiency equation is valid for any engine but what we are given is the efficiency of the steam engine that is this efficiency is given to us and we are told to compare it with the efficiency of Carnot engine so these are the things which are given to us so we are given the efficiency of the steam engine we are given the temperature of the cold reservoir and we are given the temperature of the hot reservoir now remember whenever you are given any temperature see that all the temperatures are in Kelvin scale so the efficiency of a Carnot engine is given as follows efficiency of a Carnot engine is 1 minus the temperature of the cold reservoir divided by temperature of the hot reservoir so the now if you look at the schematic of a Carnot engine it looks something like this so we have a hot reservoir and we have a cold reservoir we take in some heat from the hot reservoir we give some amount of work and some of the heat is rejected as waste in the cold reservoir so if you plug in the values in this equation we get the efficiency of a Carnot cycle to be 0.62 in other words the efficiency of Carnot cycle is 62 percent now if we compare this and this we see that the steam engine is just 15 percent efficient and Carnot engine is 62 percent so if you recollect I told you that the Carnot engine gives us the theoretical maximum so the theoretical maximum for an engine which is functioning between these two temperatures 500 degrees centigrade and 20 degrees centigrade happens to be 62 percent so we cannot have an engine whose efficiency is more than this when it is operating in between these two temperatures so what we see is when we compare when we compare 62 percent and 15 percent we see that there is much more room for the improvement of the steam engine and as we know now the petrol engine or the diesel engine is much much more efficient when you compare it with the steam engine the second problem deals with the reverse Carnot cycle what we call as refrigeration so according to the problem a freezer operates between so according to the problem a freezer operates between minus 18 degree centigrade and a high 30 degree centigrade what is the maximum possible COP that is the coefficient of performance so what is given to us is the the lower temperature that is the temperature of the freezer which is 255 Kelvin and the temperature of the hot reservoir which is 303 Kelvin again remember to convert whatever temperatures are given into the Kelvin scale and the formula for COP that is the coefficient of performance is given as TC divided by TH minus TC now this is the work input that we gave in now let us consider the uh, schematic of the refrigerator so refrigerator looks like this so we have a low reservoir which is usually the freezer we give in some work input and some heat is taken out from the freezer and is given to the atmosphere or the higher temperature reservoir so what how the temp, how the so how the refrigerator functions is you put in something which is to be cooled the refrigerator gives some work input 
and it takes out the heat whatever is there in the freezer and gives it out in the atmosphere. Now what we are finding here is the maximum possible coefficient of performance. So once we plug in the values, we get the COP to be 5.31. Now in this case, we are finding the theoretical maximum. That's the reason why we are using the reverse Carnot cycle. And hence we are using the temperatures of the reservoirs. So the COP in this case, when the temperature is between minus 18 degrees and plus 30 degrees, it is equal to 5.31. Now what does this COP of 5.31 mean? A COP of 5.31 means that each unit of work, so each unit of work that we input transfers 5.31 units of heat from inside of the freezer. In other words, what it means is if I give 1 joule of work as input, 5.31 joules of heat will be removed from the freezer. So that's what the refrigerator does. You give in some input and you remove the heat out from the object that we have placed in the freezer. Now next problem will help us understand the concept of work and COP in a much better detail. Problem asks us how much electrical energy would it take to freeze 50 grams of water initially at 0 degree centigrade and you are given the latent heat of water to be 344 kilojoules. So what is given to us is the mass of the water again remember to convert everything into SI units. So the mass of the water is 0 0.5 kg and the latent heat of fusion is 344 kilojoules. Now if we want to freeze this 50 grams of water which is initially at 0 degree centigrade what we must do is we should, have, we should remove the heat out of this water and in this case if we want to freeze the water what we are basically doing is we are changing the phase of this substance so we are making water from a liquid to a solid that is ice. So, the, so what we have to do is we have to remove heat from the water which is at 0 degree centigrade to make it ice. So the energy that is required to change the phase of water that is from liquid to ice is nothing but Q equals to Lm and the value happens to be 172 kilojoules. Now to remove this amount of heat, to remove this amount of heat, now what if we place the water in this freezer and we want to freeze it, we have to input some work such that the heat is removed. Now to remove this amount of heat, we have to give in some work. So the work is nothing but the electrical energy that we give to the refrigerator. So the work that is done is given as Q times the COP. Now in this case, we consider the refrigerator COP to be the same as what we had in the last problem that is 5.31. So plugging in the values, we get the work done to be equal to say, 32 kilojoules. Now let us try to get a feeling for these numbers. So whatever work input is given in by the refrigerator, it is given, it is provided by electricity. So it's nothing but the power that we consume. Power whose unit is watt, we define 1 watt is equal to 1 joules per second. But in our everyday life, we prefer to use kilovolt R as a unit. So we define 1 kilovolt R is equal to 3.6 into 10 to 6 joules and in Goa the rate of electricity is approximately 3 rupees per kilowatt hour. Now if you look over here, so the work that they have to give in to convert 0 0.5 kg of water into ice is 32 kilojoules. Now if you convert, if you compare it with 1 kilowatt hour, you see that the amount of money that you require to convert 0.5 kg of ice to convert 0.5 kg of water into ice happens to be around 0.008 rupees. So what we see is the larger is the COP value of the freezer, the better is the refrigeration process. So that means the work done in freezing any object is less and less work is input means less electricity consumed. So in a practical sense, you all might have seen refrigerators which are 2 stars, 3 stars and 4 stars and so on. So the higher the star rating, the higher is the COP and less is the energy consumed. 
so that's why the higher rated the highest star rated refrigerator will consume less electricity so students i'll be uploading some assignments for you all two problems based on what we have covered today see that i'll do the assignments thank you